today I'm going to be showing you guys how to make a custom quote sheet that draws from an Excel catalog. I'll first show you guys a quick preview and then we'll get into how you guys can customize it so that it works for you. We need to open up this bikes catalog. I've already got it open here. And we're going to open up our quote template. Let's open that up. Move this over here for us. All right, so here's Bike Inc. Just a little, I'm using this as an example. We're gonna go over to our Bike Inc. catalog and we're gonna browse through here. Let's say we wanna start with a basic bike. That's part number 184. We'll go into our quote sheet. Let's say we want one for now, 184. Hit enter and it's gonna load in the data for that. So it's gonna draw the description it's going to draw the unit cost. Let's say next we want a super bike. This is going to be part number 215. Let's put two of them in. 215, we're going to hit enter and it's going to load in for us. It also keeps its formatting. If you've got a couple lines here, it's going to keep its formatting and it's going to keep it clean for us. Paint, say we want red for all of them. Red, it looks like 273 is the part number. Let's get three, 273, enter. It's going to load that in accessories. Let's get a maintenance kit for all of them. That's part number 155 at the bottom of the catalog. 155. Enter it in and there we go. It's going to load in for us. At the bottom here I've just set up terms and conditions, valid through, we can sign. You guys can customize all that. Then if we want a quick preview of what that's going to look like, we can go to print and the print will give us a quick preview. And so there we go, a nicely formatted clean looking quote sheet for you guys. Now to get into how this actually works for us, we're gonna, in order to see how this works, we're gonna use something called Excel macros. So we're gonna need this developer tab over here. And in order to get that, we're gonna have to go to file, at down at the bottom here, options. And then we're gonna go to customize ribbon. Over on the right here, we're gonna select developer. This will be unchecked for you guys. If you go click check it, hit OK, and then this developer tab is gonna pop up. From here, we're interested in this macros tab. Macros are, so Excel lets you kind of create formulas in the cells, predefined formulas. This macros is gonna allow us to create custom formulas and customize a bunch of other things within Excel. So if we hit edit here, I've already created one of these. If you were gonna make a new one, you would enter in a name, hit create. Since I've already got this one defined here, we're gonna go in and hit edit. Now this is gonna open up a bunch of code for us. Uh, the good news is you guys don't know, need to know how to code or what any of this means to be able to make this work for you guys. What I'll do is in the description, I'll, I'll put a link that leads to a Google Drive or something similar that has this quote template and uh, kind of and this catalog for you so you can download these so that you've got somewhere to start and so that this code is already loaded in there and then you can customize it from there. I'll just quickly go through how all this works. You don't really need to know how it works, but it's good to know if you're interested. Up here on the top, this is on air resume next. So if we say we enter in a part number that doesn't exist, it'll be an error and this just makes sure that our code keeps running. Over here, this is our, this variable A is gonna represent our row number. So it starts at 14, which is here, the first line or the first row that we're gonna be able to input on. And it cycles through every row all the way down to a thousand. If you think your quote is gonna be more than a thousand lines long, then you can make that, then you can increase this to a bigger number. If not, I would just leave it at a thousand. Next up is the code, because the code reads as you would read normally from left to right, top to bottom. It's gonna read next. It's gonna read this if is empty, and we get that a couple of times. What this does is that as it goes through every line, it's gonna check, have we entered in the quantity and a part number? If we have entered in a quantity and a part number, it's gonna continue on and read the next bit of this code. If we haven't entered in a part number, then it's not gonna bother completing the rest of the code because there's no part number for it to search for. Next up, we get into this chunk of code that I've highlighted. What this does is it's when we input a part number, it's gonna take that part number and it's gonna travel to this 
Bike Inc.'s catalog or whatever catalog you're using, and it's going to search for that part number, it's going to find it, and then it's going to copy over the description, unit costs, and anything else that you want copied over to the quote sheet. Next up, we get down to this chunk of code that I've highlighted. This, whenever we enter in a new line here, say whenever we enter, say when we entered this basic bike, a new line was added at the bottom so that and every time we enter something in, a new line is going to get added so that we have room to enter in the next thing. This is also going to make sure our formatting stays nice and clean for us. So next up, we're going to take a look. There's a couple things that you guys might have to change depending on how customized you want your quote sheet to be. If you just want to use the same basic format of the catalog. Right now it's very simple, but you could add as many rows as you wanted to. You wouldn't have to change a thing. This will be good to go for you guys pretty much. If, you, if you'd like to add some more columns, you can add as many columns as you want. And there's a couple numbers that you're gonna have to change, but I'll walk you through it. It's gonna be easy. First off, and what, you have, what everyone will have to do, even if they're not changing that sheet. Right now, this sheet, this quoting template on the right, points towards my Bike Inc. catalog. Now, since you guys are going to be using a different catalog or something that's named differently, we're going to have to update that name. So our first change is going to be on this line, and we're going to go to this Bikes Inc. catalog. That's what mine is named right now. Whatever you choose to name your catalog, you're going to have to enter that in here. That'll be our first change. We're going to have to repeat this two more times. The next will be a couple lines down here. This is the second change that you have to update to whatever your catalog is named. And the third one is right below it, right here. After that, we're going to have to update the sheet number or the sheet name. Right now, I've just got it as Excel's default sheet one. But if you're, if you're naming your sheet something different, you'll have to update that. Here's the first one. The next one is right here highlighted. And the third and final one right below it. All these are next to the catalog names. And there you go. That just ensures that this quote template knows to, in what workbook to search for and what sheet to look in to search for our catalog parts. Next up, we're going to go to the list line here that I've highlighted. This line here, we're going to, so this is going to our bikes in catalog, sheet one. And this text here, it says B6 to B5000. So that's going to search from B6 all the way down to B5000. And so what that does is it, when we enter our part number, it's going to search for this part number in this entire column. It's going to search for it. Now, if you choose to edit this catalog, if your part number is located in a different column, let's say your part number, it's not in column B, but your part number is in column C. We're going to have to make sure that Excel searches column C. So this B here, we're just going to update that to C so that this searches for column C. And that's all you have to do in that line. Next up, when we get to this, this cell, this line here starts with cells A4. This cell, once we found our part number in the catalog, the code is then going to copy the description. Right now, the description is in column C. That's one, two, the third column. So right now, it copies column C, the third column. If your description is in a different column, say your description is in column D, then you're going to have to copy from column D. That's one, two, three, the fourth column over. So if that was the case, you would come in here and you'd update this third column to, in our case, if it's in column D, to the fourth column, and you'd update that to four. After that, it's going to be the code is going to be copying from this line, starting from cells A7, is going to be copying our price. So right now it's copying from column E. This is where all the prices are stored in this catalog. Again, if your prices are stored in a different column, you're going to have to update that number. Another thing that's important to note is right now, when we're looking for that price, if we highlight this, we're searching from B6 to E5000. So we're searching from B6 here all the way down to E, all the way down to 5,000. So that's the block we're searching. If your catalog goes all the way out to say, let's say it goes to column J, it can go as wide as you'd like it. You're going to have to search for that entire area all the way out to column J. 
let's say that you're searching all the way out to column J, you're gonna, not going to want to go to E, but you're going to have to update that to J there. Next up, we're going to have to find what column is our, our prices in. For us, it's column E. So right now, we're searching this area all the way down to 5,000. And it's important to numbering. So you might think that column E is going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, the fifth column down, but not in this case. Because we're only searching from column B to E, the numbering of the columns is going to start at column B, wherever our search box starts. So for E in this case, it's going to start from B. So that's going to be one, two, three, the fourth column. Now let's say your prices were in column F. We would have to start from column one, two, three, four, the fifth column. So if that was the case, you would have to update this four here to a five if your prices were in the E column, the fifth column over. And that's the only changes you're going to have to make. If you're deciding to, if you want to keep it simple and just use this basic setup, you won't, the only thing you'll have to update is the catalog name. If you want to have a more complex catalog and you want some more columns, then you can, we'll have to update those letters and numbers. And that's all we have to do with the code here. We can hit save and that'll save for us. I won't save it here just because I haven't made any edits, but in your guys' case, you would save it. So let's close that down. That's the last we'll have to deal with any code. Now that we've got that done, and we know we can update this, we can also update this quote sheet however you guys like. You can either keep this basic setup and just change your business name or whatever you're using this for and logo, or you can completely change it around. The only thing that you have to um, keep consistent is that the quantity and part number cells here be next to each other and always in column B and C. As long as you follow that formatting, quantity, part number next to quantity in column B and C, you can switch this around as much as you want, fully customize it. Now our last step, if we were, so we want to save this as a template. So if we were to go to file, once we're all finished up here and you're happy with your edits, the way it looks, we'd first want to get rid of any edits we've made here because when we open up this template, we want it to be blank so that we can start a new quote, delete anything we've added. There we go. So when we open up our template, it's going to start from a blank sheet here. And what we can do now is we can go save as. Let's just save this to save my desktop for now. And we can go quote template. You can name this however you want it. Let's just say final copy in this case, quote template, final copy. Now, instead of save, saving this as an Excel workbook, we're going to save this as an Excel template. I'm going to show you why this is helpful in a second. We also want to make sure that it's a macro enabled template. Macros are what we use to write our code in. So if it's not saved as a macro enabled template, our code isn't going to run and that's going to be a problem. So we want to save this as an Excel macro enabled template. We're going to hit save and there we go. So let's close this down and now we can go back here. Here's our quote template final copy. When you guys would be making a new quote, you go to our template and you can right click and there's going to be this new option. So we can hit new and that's going to create a fresh quote for us. So when this opens up, we'll drag it to the, well, let's go full screen for us. Enable our content, that's the code allowing it to run. And so here we are, a blank template. Now you notice at the top here, this is saved as quote template final copy one. So this is a new file that it's created. And you can see that our quote final copy template stays original so that we can come in here, add whatever parts we want to add, change the name of this, edit anything and save this. And it will save as its own separate copy say we can save this as quote 249 and it will save here and then we'll always have our original quote template so that it stays as kind of our blank template quote ready to go and with that that should wrap things up like i said in the description i'll have a link leading to a google drive or something similar that you guys can download this template from so that you don't have to start from scratch 
If you've got any if you've got any questions, feel free to reach out or leave a comment. And that's that's about it. Thanks for tuning in.